So over the past few weeks or so, we've gotten a myriad of trailers and gameplay presentations for the upcoming prequel to Breath of the Wild, Age of Calamity. These trailers delve further into the story surrounding the Age of Calamity game. They hint that this game story will be just as important to the overarching trilogy that came to be from Breath of the Wild. In this video, I'll go over each trailer up to this date in detail as well as theorize on how certain characters, areas, and events will play into the story. First up, we have part 1 of the Untold Chronicles from 100 years past that Nintendo dropped on October 6th. This trailer opens up with the signature Sheikah Slate, overlay dissolving into what seems to be the main chamber inside Hyrule Castle. We are greeted by King Rome giving Zelda and company a lecture about how important it is that she keeps focused on her training to reach the full potential of her powers. Next, we cut to an extremely young Robbie with a kick-ass guitar riff in what seems to be a warehouse of some sorts. Behind Robbie, we see the mystery egg-shaped guardian that we still have no clue as to what its role is in the series. Over the guardian's head, we can see what seems to be either a very large working light or some sort of exhaust similar to what we would probably see in Robbie's Akala Ancient Tech Lab in Breath of the Wild. Most notably, we see Robbie make a pose that is the exact same pose he makes whenever he introduces you in Breath of the Wild. We then cut to a shot of Zelda, Link, and young Impa looking at Robbie with a hint of confusion. Something to note here is that young Impa is seen in many of these scenes alongside Link and Zelda, hinting that she will join the two in their adventures across the land for probably much of the game. After this quick succession of cuts, we see a pensive Ravi alongside Hillian soldiers on one of the castle walls looking down at what I can only assume is a field where they may be testing newly discovered guardians. As we know from Breath of the Wild, Ravi is a master scientist and technician and fully understands guardian technology. He's your main provider of ancient arrows, armor, and other tools that are extremely effective against these humongous robots. Ravi utters the words, Rule one of the researcher's code is to never give up. Further proving that they are indeed in the middle of some arduous testing of some sort. Next, we see a pair of feet walking towards camera and we hear a young female voice say, Oh yeah! Check it! Only to be greeted with none other than Pura. As we know, Pura in the original game takes the form of an extremely young version of herself. Here, however, she's shown as a young adult. Pyrrha still has her symbolic streak of colored hair, her distinct glasses on top of her head, and we also see she is carrying a Sheikah slate of her own. This leads me to believe that she also has access to Sheikah technology and abilities, meaning that she will be a playable character or at least will be one of the characters that will aid you in your adventure by providing you with Sheikah slate upgrades. And then, as per common Zelda and Impa fashion, we see them both just as perplexed as they were with Ravi. Afterwards, we cut to Pura walking next to Reboza, Link, and Zelda, and then proceeding to walk in front of them and telling them, It won't be easy, but we're not gonna let that stop us, eh? Meaning that they have either already encountered malice or corrupted technology. Most notably, in this scene, we see both Urbosa and Link with their respective champion garments, which means that they have already begun training or have at least already mastered controlling the Divine Beasts. This may then mean that this short interaction takes place late in the game. Finally, we cut to both Pura and Ravi looking curiously at a Sheikah Slate, which, although it doesn't say much, it does provide a look at how close together these two are will actually work, providing further proof that they both will be serving as aides and upgrade masters to our heroes. Although this first trailer is a little bare bones, it does provide a very charming look into what kind of characters we'll see and interact in Age of Calamity. Further providing proof to my opinion that Age of Calamity will be extremely reliant on the story and will probably have a richer tale in comparison to Breath of the Wild. On the second part, or the second trailer, of the Untold Chronicles from 100 years past, we get to see a complete contrast as to what we just experienced in part 1. 
Part two of these chronicles serve as an introduction to a couple of new villains. The trailer opens with its emblematic Sheikah tech filter with a master Koga laughing maniacally. We can clearly see that he's in the exact same location where you battle him in Breath of the Wild. Here, Master Koga can also be seen to not have many differences from the previous game. It's pretty common in Zelda lore for many characters to live long lives way past 100 years. So it's not too far fetched to think that Master Koga here is a young adult and in Breath of the Wild he's probably an older version of himself. That's why he's a rather easy boss to beat. Also, as we know, the Yiga clan are comprised of descendants of Sheikahs who abandoned their allegiance to the royal family and swore an allegiance to Calamity Ganon. We are then introduced to a new villain who wields two blades that resemble nothing close as to what the other Yiga foot soldiers currently wield. The villain is also differentiated by their M-shaped hairpiece that is very different to the bun that many Yiga foot soldiers wear. We then cut to this villain being chased by a Link still in Helian armor, alluding to the fact that this encounter might happen early in the game. Most notably, this villain's mask seems to have a crack across. Whether this signifies that Link and the villain fight religiously or that he is actually just as careless as Master Koga is yet to be determined. During the Yiga villain's show of acrobatics, we can see in the background what seems to be the Great Plateau. If we were to pinpoint where this exact encounter takes place, I would say this is somewhere in between the outpost ruins and the east post ruins. After we see Master Koga reintroduce himself in the comically unique way that he always does, we are greeted with a scene in what appears to be the Yiga hideout. Here we see the newly introduced Yiga Blade Master with a Master Koga kneeling in front of him. But most notably, this is the introduction of what appears to be a new antagonist. This star cloaked individual does not show many defining characteristics. Are they a man, a woman, a sorcerer, a warrior? We, we just don't know. One thing to note though is that the hot pinkish orb that seems to adorn the top of their walking stick or wand. We then cut to another funny ad lib for Master Koga saying, He's gonna kill you all, too which honestly just makes no sense and completely cracks me up. We then fade to black and end up in a place that closely resembles the muted colors of the Lost Woods as we see two Yiga foot soldiers kneeling and who seem to be waiting on orders from our newly introduced villain. Here we get a closer look at what exactly is the hot pinkish orb and what it closely resembles. Just from first appearances, we can see the uncanny resemblance it has to a giant ancient core. These giant ancient cores can be found around Hyrule after defeating guardians, or sometimes in chests. However, these are extremely rare pieces of ancient technology. Although not much is known about these pieces, they can be used to manufacture ancient equipment and armor such as the ancient bow and the ancient armor. Since these pieces of technology come exclusively from Guardians and their ilk, this orb leads me to believe that the new villain has the knowledge and the ability to use this ancient technology and or probably corrupt it to control it. Furthermore, we can see that the villain has a rather peculiar symbol on their cape. It's a design depicting what seems to be a sort of combination of the Gerudo crest and the Sheikah symbol which may mean that this person is not a Gerudo nor a Sheikah exclusively. I mean, it's all up in the air currently. After this, we cut to a close up of the villain's eyes. We see a rather emblematic eye that greatly resembles a glowing eyeball of malice that we see across multiple areas in Breath of the Wild. These enemies are what appear to be producers of malice as every time you defeat one, the malice around the area disappears. And this hairpiece also alludes to the theory I just posed. This villain does indeed have the ability to corrupt Shiga technology with malice. The hairpiece is also something very emblematic between the Gerudo as previous Gerudo figures wore headpieces with large gems such as Ganondorf, Urboza, and Naburo. We further see a braid of washed out blonde hair across the villain's face. 
Something to note here is that this character had both the Gerudo and Shika symbols combined to form a rather unique symbol. And as we all know, the Gerudo have a very distinct fiery red color for their hair. However, I am reminded of the existence of the Gerudo sorceress Twin Rova, who did indeed have white hair and amber eyes, much like this newly introduced villain. We also see that this character has very pale greenish skin. This skin hue reminds me a lot of classic enemies such as Girahim, Aghanim, and Yuga especially Yuga, given his very similar characteristics with this villain, such as the hairpiece with an emblem or gem on the front, their wand with a unique piece at the top, and most notably their greenish pale skin. Ever since the release of this trailer, there's been a myriad of theories. Many are saying that this is just going to be another iteration of a B-Zelda enemy much like Xant and Girahim were in their respective games. I honestly believe that this is another iteration of Yuga, given that there are just too many similarities between the two. Although not necessarily Yuga, but more of like a descendant of Yuga. But a part of me also believes that this new villain is the fortune teller that passes on the prophecy of Calamity Ganon and Shika technology buried underneath Hyrule, to the members of the royal family. This fortune teller isn't mentioned very often in Breath of the Wild and surprisingly isn't given too much attention besides a vague mention here and there. The theory behind the fortune teller is that this character knew about the guardians buried underneath Hyrule and convinced the king to unearth them to help them in the inevitable clash with Calamity Ganon. However, this fortune teller also knew about the ability to corrupt ancient Sheikah technology. So why did the fortune teller convince the king to unearth the Sheikah technology? Was it to sabotage the king's efforts to defend Hyrule? Was it because this fortune teller was always an ally to Ganon? Or did the fortune teller have their own plans of taking over Hyrule and using Calamity Ganon only as a distraction to get what they're looking for? Whatever it may be, we know that this villain has the ability to A. Corrupt ancient Sheikah technology with malice B. May be part of the Gerudo and C. Works closely with the Yiga as an informant of some sort. But you tell me what you think. What theories do you have for this newly unearthed, no pun intended, villain? Do you think this is just another iteration of a B villain, much like Girahim or Zant was? Leave all your theories down below in the comments. But with that, folks, I've been True Ferny. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe. Links to my socials are down below. Please make sure to follow me on Twitch where I've recently become an affiliate and any and all support over there is greatly appreciated. Please take care of each other, but most importantly, take care of yourself. November 20th cannot come fast enough. Peace.